What if I told you that your consciousness, the very essence of your being, could be intertwined with the mysteries of quantum mechanics? A bold statement, perhaps, but consider this. The human mind, with its unique characteristics, presents six conditions that seem irreconcilable with the materialistic perspective. We're talking about intentionality, qualia, persistence of self-identity, restricted access, incorrigibility and free will. These are aspects of consciousness that challenge our conventional understanding of the physical world. One of these aspects, qualia, the subjective what-it's-like experience of consciousness, is particularly perplexing. Philosopher of the mind Frank Jackson presented this problem beautifully in his philosophical argument known as Mary's Room. He suggests that there's something inherently subjective about consciousness that science, in its current form, struggles to comprehend. But what if the qualities of consciousness that seem so elusive to science could find an ally in the strange world of quantum mechanics? The concept of time has been a point of contention between physicists and philosophers, with none other than Albert Einstein himself asserting that the time of the philosophers did not exist. Einstein's view of time was purely physical, rooted in his groundbreaking theories of relativity. His concept of time was a seamless continuum, a fourth dimension inseparable from the three dimensions of space. Contrast this with the perspective of philosopher Henry Bergson, who saw time as an experiential phenomenon, a continuous flow of moments lived and felt by conscious beings. This distinction led to a heated exchange between the two intellectual giants with Einstein dismissing Bergson's notion of time as irrelevant to the realm of physics. Einstein's dismissal didn't end with Bergson. He also told philosopher Rudolf Carnap that the experience of the now cannot be turned into an object of physical measurement. It can never be a part of physics. This statement reflects Einstein's belief that the subjective experience of time, the now we all feel, couldn't be quantified or measured scientifically. However, recent experiments in quantum mechanics are challenging this belief. These experiments, such as the delayed choice experiment with atoms, are revealing that the act of measurement, the conscious observation, can influence the behavior of quantum particles. As one experiment concluded, at the quantum level, reality does not exist if you're not looking at it. This finding is a direct contradiction to Einstein's assertion. It implies that the now, the very experience of observing, does exist in the quantum world and plays a crucial role in determining reality. It suggests that the philosopher's time, the subjective experience of the now, is very much a part of the scientific understanding of the universe. So it seems that the now, contrary to Einstein's belief, is becoming an integral part of our understanding of quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics often defies our intuition, and it seems to be doing so again by giving weight to the experience of the now. This is not just a philosophical musing, it's something we observe in the lab with experiments that challenge our understanding of reality. Consider the delayed choice experiment with atoms, a fascinating study that turns the concept of objective reality on its head. This experiment shows that the behavior of atoms shifts based on whether or not they are observed. It's almost as if these particles are saying, reality does not exist if you are not looking at it. The same sentiment is echoed in the violation of Leggett's inequality. This principle stresses the quantum mechanical assertion that reality does not exist when we're not observing it. It's a bold claim, one that seems to fly in the face of our everyday experiences, but the evidence is there. In the meticulous recordings of countless experiments, this brings us back to the now, the present moment as we experience it. If quantum mechanics is correct and reality is shaped by observation, then the now is not just a fleeting moment. It's the stage on which reality unfolds, the lens through which we bring the universe into focus. MIT professor Scott Aronson sums it up beautifully. He says, look, we all have fun ridiculing the creationists, but if we accept the usual picture of quantum mechanics, then in a certain sense, the situation is far worse. The world, as you experience it, might as well not have existed 10 to the power of negative 43 seconds ago. So what does this mean for physics? For our understanding of the universe, well, it suggests that the now, our moment-to-moment -moment experience, is not just a human construct, it's not separate from the physical world, it's a fundamental part of it. So the now, as we experience it, might be more relevant to physics than we previously thought. 
Uh, not only does quantum mechanics bring the now into play, but it also brings in something quite unexpected, free will. Let's delve into this a bit further. Steven Weinberg, a renowned physicist, once stated that in quantum mechanics, probabilities do not exist until people choose what to measure. Unlike classical physics, a choice must be made. It's as if the universe is waiting for us to make a decision to choose our path before it decides its own. Now you might be thinking, isn't there a loophole here? Anton Zeilinger, a Nobel laureate, thought so too. In a groundbreaking experiment, he used light from distant quasars to close this freedom of choice loophole. This experiment further solidified the idea that our choices, our free will, might indeed play a role in shaping the reality we observe. So it seems that our choices, our free will, might play a role in shaping the reality we observe. These findings from the realm of quantum mechanics seem to echo some of the immaterial aspects of consciousness. They hint at a reality where the observer, the mind, plays a central role challenging our conventional materialistic worldview. The evidence is increasingly suggesting a mind-first or even a theistic interpretation of reality where consciousness isn't just a byproduct but a fundamental component of the universe. Interestingly though, resistance to these interpretations remains. Some people find it hard to let go of the materialistic perspective despite the mounting quantum evidence that points towards the contrary. They find the idea of a mind-first or theistic reality challenging, even unsettling. But then, isn't science all about challenging our preconceptions and pushing the boundaries of what we think we know? As we delve deeper into the mysteries of the universe, we must be open to following the evidence wherever it may lead, even if it takes us into the realm of consciousness.